What's up, everyone? Welcome back to part two of our numerical integration series. And in this one, we're going to use SciPy to do our integration. So in part one, we started with the simple example of the trapezoid rule, and we use that to get a basic understanding of what numerical integration is. And the trapezoid rule is pretty good for learning, but in the real world, we want to use something a lot more optimized. And that's where SciPy comes in. So we're going to go step by step and show you how to use the quad integration algorithm. So let's get started. So SciPy has a library called integration. And if we come to the documentation, you'll see that there's lots of different algorithms for integration. We've got trapezoid rule, we've got Simpson's rule, and we've got this other thing called Romberg integration. But the algorithm that we're going to use is called quad. So if we come and click on quad, you'll see that this is a technique from the Fortran library called quad pack. So this is something that's been around for a long time. It's highly optimized and it's pretty much the go to algorithm for integration. So if you want to read more up on quad pack, there's a wiki site and there's lots of documentation you'll find online. But this thing is a pretty complex algorithm, way too complex to discuss in this video. But we don't need to know all the details. We just need to know how to use it and what it's going to return for us. And the great thing about SciPy is they've taken this Fortran code and they've compiled it down. And so when we use quad, we're actually running that compiled Fortran code. So we're getting the speed and optimization of compiled Fortran code, but with the ease of Python which is pretty awesome if you ask me. Now let's see how this quad function works. So I'm gonna jump over to a new notebook and like always, there'll be a link in the description to my GitHub where you can access this notebook. And the first thing I'm gonna do is our import. So we'll import numpy as np. Then from scipy, we're going to import integrate. Now what I need is a simple function to integrate. So like the last video, I'm just gonna use a sine function. So our function is gonna be called f of x and all it's gonna do is return np.sine of x. And for comparison, I wanna look at the difference between the quad algorithm and our trapezoid algorithm. So what I'm gonna do is just copy the um, trapezoid function from the first video. So what I did was make a slight modification to it. So now what we do is we pass in our function and our lower and upper bounds of the integral and the number of points we want. So the reason I did this was to match the convention of quad in SciPy. So let's go ahead and run that. So to start, what I wanna do is compute the integral of sine of x over the same limits from zero to pi. If you remember from the first video, that integral was exactly two. So to compute it using trapezoid rule, I just call trap and we'll pass the function f. Our lower bound is zero, our upper bound is pi, and let's give it 15 points. So you can see we get 1.99 and a bunch of decimals, which is pretty accurate. But now let's do it using quad. So the way we do that is we call integrate dot quad. We pass it our function and then our lower bound and our upper bound. So you can see here what we're returned is the answer and then the estimated error between the actual and the approximation. So you can see our answer is exact and the error is extremely small. You know, this is 10 to the minus 14, which is pretty, pretty good. Um, it's a lot more accurate than our trapezoid one. So you can see if we want to get um, anywhere near to it, we're going to need a lot more trapezoids. So if we run this, you can see it already takes a long time. And um, let's see how close we are. Let's subtract two from it. Cool, so with this many points, we're almost as accurate as the, um, the quad. We're still not quite as good, but um, we're getting close. But now, just to give you an example, let's go ahead and do time it. Let's run this, see how long it takes. Okay, 
And you can see this one's taking a long time. Cool, so it's taking about three seconds per loop. Now let's run this one. All right, so this is taking 18.2 microseconds per loop. And not only is it faster, like extremely faster, but it's even more accurate. So it's still about 10 times more accurate than our trapezoid rule integration. So, and you can see just about how much faster it is by the number of loops. Here we can only do one, and here we're doing 100,000. So this thing is, you know, about 100,000 times faster than the trapezoid rule. So I hope you guys can appreciate just how powerful the SciPy integration library is. We're getting this highly optimized and highly accurate algorithm, and we're getting it all with just one line of code. So if people have spent years coding and optimizing to get this algorithm to what it is today, and SciPy has done all the hard work and taken that optimized Fortran code, compiled it down, and given us an interface where, like I said, we can just use one line of code and boom, we get our answer. So if that's not impressive, then I'm not sure what is. But anyways, that's it for this video. The idea was to keep it quick, just like this integration is. So if you like the video, give it a like. Um, if you've got more questions on numerical integration, leave a comment below. We'll talk more. And I think I'm going to do another video on this, so stay tuned. So if you like the content you're seeing, hit that subscribe button, and I'll be back for more. Thanks, guys. See ya.